Oh, it's a crazy time. Everything is going pear-shaped in some parts of the world. Everything's going swimmingly well in others. We're in business. We're trying to survive. We're trying to make sure we've got income coming in. We're still marketing. We've still got customers. We're still doing business. The number one thing that we're probably forgetting about is our team. What are we doing to develop our team and make our team better at their jobs? What I'm seeing across multiple industries, across multiple businesses, is that the training that we are doing is purely operational based training and it's teaching team members what to say and when to say it around the issues that are coming up in our businesses. Now that makes perfect sense because that's what we have to do. But what are we doing to develop them? What are we doing them to make them better human beings or better people in our business? Welcome to JT in the Raw, show 205, 205, where I chew the thin on business. And today, I'm going to be chewing the thin a little bit on team development. What does that look like? Good morning, Marissa. Good morning, LBL down there in Melbourne. Hope you're feeling better, LBL. I really do hope you are feeling better. You are the only person I know that has COVID, so I am my thoughts and prayers are with you, my friend. Sean, good morning. Craig, good morning. Hope everybody is doing great under the circumstances of this weird ass world that we are living in at the moment. And what I've found this week in talking to a bunch of clients is quite simply, they are living on adrenaline. They're thriving on chaos and they are just trying almost to survive life as well as business. Now the problem with that is that we forget about strategy. We forget about the strategic development of our team. And that's what today's show is all about. What I need to do under all circumstances is I need to remind you right now of why you need to be investing in your team. Jamie Hayes, good morning. Yvonne, good morning. And I've got nine reasons, nine reasons why you should be doing team development. Number one is it increases their job satisfaction. And at a time right now, where there's some serious challenges about coming to work, getting job satisfaction, I think is a major one. There's so many changes in their jobs. So if you can add team development, making them better at their job, making them better human beings, then job satisfaction's a winner. Good mo oh, good evening, Lexi. How are you over there in the UK? Okay, number two is it also increases the morale among your staff. Again, perhaps now morale is flat. Morale could be just flatlining. So could you increase the morale by doing some team development. Number three is it increases their motivation, individual motivation. Emma Barry, g'day, hope you had a great trip out in the red center of, or red center, red state of the US of A on your holiday. Number four, increasing the efficiencies as well as the, in the processes as well as the results. When we train our team, when we're putting effort and energy into developing our team, we improve our efficiencies. The business will benefit from that. It increases our ability to adapt. Right now, there is so much change going on. Perhaps one of the greatest resources you could do is give every team member the book, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, and maybe, that might help them adapt to the change. Now maybe that might help them adapt to the change. Number six, it increases my in innovation. Duh, duh, duh. Ah, I used to speak for a living. It increases innovation. Staff training will enhance how they view your company. It'll enhance how people look at you, how people see your business. Number eight, Staff training is exactly what we've been doing. It reduces risk. It de decreases 
risk by training our team. And number nine, it decreases employee turnover. Again, in a world where we're losing team members and we want to keep team members, by doing having a, a structured team training program, it reduces our turnover, it keeps people staying with us. So for those nine reasons alone, I want us to turn the mirror on our team training development program. And I've got five questions I wanna ask you. Five simple questions, they're not hard, they're real simple. We're gonna go through them one by one. You don't have to answer them with me now, but I want you to go away and answer them yourself. Jacob Thomas. As I live and breathe, Jacob Thomas is on the line. Hello. Lexi says, can fully support your words. Lucky to have clients who are passionate about developing their managers and teams. Yeah, we are. Some of us are, Lex. And by the way, this is not a sales pitch because I'm going to come to what this comes to later after these five questions. So these are the five questions I want you to ask about your own business. Number one, who leads the team development in your business? Who leads the team development in your business? Number two, how much time do you allocate to team development in your business? How much time do you allocate? For example, today on one of my calls, I had someone say that on a Tuesday, 40% of the time that a staff member is at work must be spent on developing themselves. 40% of the hours they are at work on a Tuesday, because Tuesday is Development Tuesday, Tuesday, 40% of that time is spent developing themselves. How much time do you allocate to your team getting better at their jobs? Number three, what's your budget? How much money do you spend on this? Number four, how do you determine what that training focus is? How do you determine what that training focus is? And number five, how do you evaluate the success of your training? How do you evaluate the success of your training? So this is a little self audit. Is that the right word? If you think that's the right word, hit me with a love heart right now. It's kind of a self audit of your internal training processes with your team. Those five questions again, who leads the training? Who leads that development? How much time are you allocating? What is your budget? How do you determine the focus? And how do you evaluate the success? They're the five things that I need you to go away and think about. Because at the moment, we, are, we aren't focusing on the development of our team. And I gave you nine reasons before why we need to be doing team development. I gave you those nine. But at the moment, we are just trying to survive. I get that. But part of that survival, part of that cash coming in, part of that business development, part of those sales, part of that marketing has to be ensuring that our team are ready to deal with our customers that our team are ready to deal with prospects, that our team are ready to work with each other to create unbelievable experiences for our customers. Alan Leach, good evening, sir. The last man you will see before you go to sleep tonight, I am sure, as it's closing in just after 11 o'clock in Dublin. So, that's the process. Now, one question that I get constantly from people is, I can't afford the money to develop my team. And at this point, perhaps there are a number of people that are actually questioning where they should be spending their hard earned dollars. And should those hard earned dollars be in fact be spent on developing the team? Should it just not be paying bills? So here is my thought on this. There is a shitload of resources online that is for free. Do I need to say that again? There is stuff at your fingertips for free. What you need to do as the leader of your business is invest some time to identify what is that training focus, find those resources online, and then use those resources to train your team. 
So the only cost, the only two costs, which is only one cost, is your time. It's your time to A, know what you're looking for, and B, to find that online. I had a really um, amazing experience this week because I was on a call with uh, a Rex call and there was like 15 um, Rex owners and one of the owners said our number one go-to resource for developing our team is the Fitness Business Podcast. Now, that made me very happy. What I found out later is he didn't even know that I was involved, let alone that I owned the Fitness Business Podcast. But he said, that is my, our greatest resource. He said, I just pick, a, pick an episode, I give that to a team member to listen to, or team members to listen to, and then we come back and we talk about what those learnings are. I think I'm right in saying 95, 99% of podcasts on the planet are free to listen to. So you don't have to listen to the Fitness Business Podcast. There are other podcasts that you can listen to and give them to your team. They are free, no cost. What you need to do is understand that there's a pain point in your team member's job. You need to find the solution. And if that solution is a podcast, give it to them to listen to. Is it a TED Talk? Is it a TED talk that you want them to listen to? Is it, a, is it a book summary that you could give them? Instead of giving them a whole book to read, is there a book summary? I talked about before, Who Moved My Cheese? Great book, awesome book, but there's also a terrific YouTube link to watch Who Moved My Cheese? And it, you, instead of reading the book, while it's a great book to read and it's easy, quick to read, Maybe a three to five minute video will have more impact with your team. What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is I want you to invest that time back in your team that you may well have dropped off during COVID. Marissa has just shared the stat, 94% of people would stay longer at their team if they had an investment in learning. Thanks, Marissa, for sharing that. That's a great stat. I understand as leaders of your business, you have had priorities. I understand that. I'm asking you now to refocus your training and development with your team. To get the most from your team, to build their satisfaction, to increase morale, improve employee motivation, improve efficiencies in the business, increase capacity to adapt, increase innovation, enhance the company image, decrease risk management, decrease employee turnover. To do all of those, revisit your team development program. What does it look like? Revisit it. And the five questions I need you to self audit are these. Who is leading the development? How much time are you allocating to that development? What is your budget? How do you determine the focus? And how do you evaluate the success? Dwayne Wimmer, good evening, sir. Damien, hello, Avril Henry, I saw you in there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this motivates you to revisit your training and development with your team, to refocus it. What can we be doing? Life has changed. Life is now, training is more accessible than ever. We can do Zoom. I can do a Zoom call for your team. You can get other people to do Zoom calls. You can reach out to an amazing number of people who can help. It's exciting times. In fact, for me, the glass is half full with training and development. It's not half empty. It is half full and we can do it. So. Your challenges, two of them. Number one, do the self audit. Do the self audit of those five questions. Challenge number two, whether you're watching live or on replay, pop in the comments below your favorite resource, your favorite book, your favorite um, podcast, your favorite TED talk that you use with your team to help develop them, to help them get better at their job. Paul Bedford, you should be fast asleep. What are you doing up at this hour? So, your two bits, the self-audit. Second one, in the comments below, love you to share 
your favorite book, your favorite resource to help develop your team, whatever that may be. Would you do that for me? That would be awesome if you would, okay? So, if you got any value out of today's show, please, please, please tag anybody in the comments below. Please hit the share button. Training and development is critical to keeping our businesses running, to keeping our team motivated, to keeping our people on point. You're right, Lexi, there are a, quite a few Brits, quite a few POMs on board. Love it. Story Brand, great book. Love it. One Minute Manager, great book. Love it. Thanks. Let's fill this feed today, whether you're watching live or on replay, of resources that are almost free that people could use to make their team better at their job. To make their team better at their job. Remember, if we think about this, if we think about this, I want you to think about that old acorn analogy. You plant the acorn and it grows into this massive oak tree. But you need to tender that acorn, it just doesn't grow. Your team members are exactly the same. We need to tender them. We need to feed them with good stuff. And there's a hell of a lot of shit that they're being fed out in, out in the environment and the world that we live in now. So take it upon yourself to make them better human beings and better team members with a really well-structured team development program. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you got any value out of it, please let me know in the comments below. Hit me up with a love heart, whether you're watching now or on replay. And of course, you can always share the show by tagging people or hitting the share button. You've been tuned in to JT in the Raw Show 205, same time every week. I look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, catch you on the flip side.